Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Hemp Barons. I'm Dan Humiston. And if you missed last week's episode, then you haven't heard that we have a brand new host. Joy Beckerman has taken over on the mic, which is awesome because not only is she the world's foremost hemp authority, but she also knows all the other hemp barons, which is obvious in today's show as she reconnects with one of her old friends and a true hemp serial entrepreneur. Let's join Joy's conversation with Morris Beagle. Well, hey there, Morris. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thanks, Joy. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, great to be able to speak to you on hip barons. You know, we've known each other now for some years, and there are so many things to start with. I just really want to preface this by saying, Morris, your role in the not only the national hemp industry, this emerging economy and for this promising and virtual plant is so important, but also on a global level. The amount of points that you hit and the and the leadership in so many areas that we benefit from for you is just phenomenal. It, it may very well be unprecedented. In fact, I think it is. And so many things to discuss, so many projects that you have going on. But let's let's just start at the top, the one that really brings me the most joy to talk about. And I think you too. And that's NOCO, the Northern Colorado Hemp Expo. You just had your sixth annual one. Could you please tell us about the birth of NOCO and really the exponential growth of that incredible community building event? Sure. Well, we started Colorado Hemp Company in 2012 in Colorado when Amendment 64 was introduced to tax and regulate marijuana like alcohol and basically legalize adult use. And within that legislation, there was opportunity for hemp farmers to start growing hemp in Colorado. And that basically pulled me and Elizabeth Knight into the into the hemp industry, starting Colorado Hemp Company in 2012. And fast forward to 2014, there was just a need to start doing these events and trade shows and conferences that had education and bringing industry together and, and educating the public on the differences between hemp and marijuana, but yet it's all cannabis. But here's the whole plant, and, and here's what we focused on on the hemp side. And so in 2014, when we launched it, it was at a small bar in Windsor, Colorado that drew like 330 people. It was packed. It was a great show, half a dozen, I shouldn't say half a dozen, there was a couple dozen speakers, bands, hemp food, hemp beer, a couple dozen exhibitors, and it was a really good good show. And from there, it's just magnified every year to this last year where we had over 10,000 people and 200 exhibitors in Denver, and it was sold out. And it's just been this energy that continues to grow year after year after year with great people coming together and from all different walks of life, all different industries, there's a convergence going on. And it's been great to be part of that and to help facilitate an industry and a movement that's truly going to change the world. And Morris, there are several hemp conferences that go on. NOCO is so unique. It has gotten the best hemp event award from the Hemp Industries Association for two years in a row. You draw people from all over the world. And brother, I have to say that that's something that's you and that's your spirit and that's your energy because I walk around these shows, your NOCO shows, and you have a look of joy on your face of such pure happiness. And when people give you compliments and say, thank you, and you're doing such a great job, Morris, you know, you, you don't even receive that. You reflect it back tenfold on the person who is expressing their gratitude and their congratulations to you for creating that space. And, and the vibration that you set and the, and, and the reward that you reap from your true selflessness and love for this plant and sense of duty to deliver on the promise of this plant, it's, it's simply unmatched. And let's talk for a second also about she, and then I can't wait to talk about really, we are for better alternatives, which you're the co-founder and president of it. And it's this multitude of projects and entities within WASPA, we are for better alternatives that this operates. But again, this community building aspect is something that I just so admire and enjoy and look forward to. You've also expanded now to she, which we love. Uh, we know that was on purpose to celebrate the female 
energy. And that's the Southern Hemp Expo taking place in Tennessee. You had the first one last year. Am I right? Could you tell us a little bit about that and, and the potentially unexpected um, response that you got? Yeah, so we wanted to launch another show on the other side of the country. You know how Expo West and Expo East, and you've got MJ Biz in Las Vegas, and then you've got the MJ Biz Conference in New Orleans. And we felt that it was necessary to to launch a show that was either in the South or up in the East. And and the Nashville thing just happened to work out. I'd met with uh, Cecily Friday and Colleen Kihei a couple years ago, and we had discussed bringing the NOCO energy and the NOCO information to, to the South, and we thought Nashville would be a great place. And so when we did it there last year, we did it out at the fairgrounds, and we sold out the the expo hall, we sold out the conference, and we had over 4,000 people, and it was a tremendous response for the first year event out there. It was really, really well welcomed. And we're excited to go back there this year. We're actually moving it just outside of Nashville to a town called Franklin that's like 25, 30 minutes away. There's this Ag Expo Center. We're going to have 150-plus exhibitors, six to 8,000 people this year. It's very farm and ag. It's going to be a super, super cool event, especially in Tennessee now that's got almost 3,000 registrants for farming out there. I mean, they are excited about hemp, and we're excited to, to be out there and bring the whole tribe from around the world to, to share their experience and really make things happen in the South. Oh, it's so important. And what's going on down there, some such great leadership, as you know, Clint Palmer, D.W. Cooper, Cody Steele's just doing such important work, uh, research work, and gathering folks together. It's, it, I think it may be the largest hemp industries association chapter, over 300 members, and their monthly meetings there are like three hours. Tennessee is serious. And just wow, what a great place to end up. And and also, and then we'll move on to, again, your very illustrious projects that you do in the actual hemp industry beyond what is what could essentially be a full career for somebody, which is which is these conferences that you do. I, again, just can't help to drive it home. Your spirit of cooperation and community building is of such a shining example to our community. And you even operate a website called hempevents.org which folks can go to. I recommend hempevents.org to regulators, lawmakers, researchers, folks in the industry, students and teachers. And that is a website that shows all of the hemp events that are going on all over the place, not just NOCO and SHE, but all of the hemp conferences, brother. What a tremendous service that you provide to the community by operating and maintaining that website, hempevents.org. I just wanted to a quick a quick comment about hempevents.org and and coming from the music industry and being a promoter and an event producer uh I've always found that it's great to to try to work with as many other promoters and producers that are out there that have the same mindset that have the same intention and that's what hempevents.org is about is is collaborating with other producers promoters from around the country and around the world that want to promote the same message and the same intention and the same purpose about this plant. So that's what that event there, that site's for. And we're not the only ones out there doing it, but we want to work with others that want to promote this plant in the correct way. It's incredible. And you want to provide a resource to folks who are thirsting, absolutely thirsting for information and education about this incredible plant. And of course, we Happy Scratch, you certainly do. You have a background, brother, in music promotion. Um, Happy Scratch record, I, Records, I know you formed in Colorado in the 90s. And in fact, one of the offshoots of the, the prolific endeavors that you are engaged in with hemp and have been for a number of years is you also started a hemp guitar company. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So I launched Silver Mountain Hemp Guitars last year, and I had been Working back and forth with a company out of Canada, Canadian Hemp Guitars, who is one of a couple of guitar companies in the last 10 years that has tried to make guitars and instruments out of hemp. And we formed a really good relationship, and I asked them if we could you know, figure out a way to come up with a private label situation. They could build specific models of guitars for me. And, and so we built a couple of different models that they hadn't built before, a Telecaster model and an SG model, and we're getting ready to build a Strat model. And now we're doing Ukes. And I found a, a guitar cabinet manufacturer that could build cabinets using hemp board, which I'm now getting from Larry Serbin at 
hemp traders who just came out with a brand new can of board, which is super cool. It's, it's grown and manufactured in the United States. So we've got hemp board guitar cabinets that again are homegrown here in the United States, produced in the United States. And, and we've got hemp guitar cabinets that we're going to probably be able to build 50 or 60 of before the end of the year and really go into a little bit more production than we have been. And we're also making hemp guitar straps and hemp guitar picks and volume knobs made out of hemp plastic. So it's a small boutique label at this point, but I think that it's a great it's a it's a it's a great way to show the public that hey, hemp can do all kinds of things. It can even make guitars. So I again I think it's more I mean, of a, a piece that, that, that promotes the plant. You know, I don't want to be Gibson or Fender or any of that. I mean, wood guitars are great, but it just goes to show that this plant can really do anything. And and that is just a great segue for the question that I was gnawing a hole on the inside of my cheek to ask you while you were speaking while my heart was bursting, because it's essentially you're taking <laughs> your passion for music and you are using it as a showcase and demonstration hub for so many uses of this versatile plant. And, and for the listeners who, who may not realize what we're talking about when we say hemp guitar, you know, I wonder if they're picturing uh, something with leaves coming out of it. Now, hemp board looks like plywood, guys, and it's, except that instead of cutting down trees, uh, we are using a fast-growing, renewable crop, hemp herd, the inner woody core of that stock to create the hemp board. You tell us a little bit just about the bioplastic or the hemp resins or however it is that you create the, the guitar. So the guitar body is what it's a bass fiber composite that is molded around a wood core. So it's really it's about between an eighth and a third of an inch thick. And it's a, again, it's a bass fiber composite. And then there's a we, we've been working on different lacquer finishes because they're really it's a it's a tough thing to find a good eco friendly lacquer. So there there's been some prototyping going on there and i think that we've about got it figured out because there's been some cracking with this lacquer finish over the course of the last couple of years depending on what environment it goes into and that, that's another thing that's tricky about guitars in general where you go from a humid climate to a dry climate like colorado and stuff like that so figuring out all the nuances of the materials is a challenging thing but they're great guitars the the bodies look super cool you can see the the fiber grain in it you can color it however you want we're getting ready to do a couple of natural guitars so you'll really be able to see kind of the the herd and the fiber finish because there's there's a little bit of herd in there as well too so anyway it's it's the body of the guitar that's that's the hemp part Yes, no, this is so great and and bass fiber for for listeners who may not realize that's the outer bark of the hemp stock. So the herd is the inner woody core and the bass is that outer bark. And, and there were other bass fiber crops, canaf and flax and so on. Um, just amazing. I want to take a minute to thank all of our Hemp Barons listeners and to let you know that you can support the show by subscribing to MJ Bulls Premium. It's only $4.99 a month, and you gain access to all previous episodes of Hemp Barons, as well as all MJ Bulls other podcasts and exclusive content. Go to MJBulls.com and enter promo code BARONS to get your first month free. I remember interviewing you in July of 2015. We're already well friends and, and brother and sister by that time, but I get to do some writing for Marijuana Venture Magazine out of Seattle. And I remember interviewing you because now, as if everything that we haven't spoken about is so important and such a major contribution, getting right down to it, brother, replacing toxic wood paper that is inferior to hemp paper with hemp blended paper um, of archival quality that's naturally acid free and so on and so forth. We're really starting to talk about chopping the wood and carrying the water for planetary healing and Colorado Hemp Company. Um, also has a branch tree free hemp paper. And I found a sentence in, in the article that I wrote about you. And um, it said, you know, you started this with Lizzie at night and business development manager, Chris Rogan. And, you, and when you had this inspiration, you found that sourcing hemp blend, blended paper was, quote, well, basically impossible, period, worldwide, period. And you realized you were going to have to manufacture it yourself. Can you tell us about the challenges 
of, uh, which are all opportunities, all opportunities to build infrastructure. Every challenge that we have in hemp is really just more opportunity to get engaged and to build this economy. But tell us a little about the, about the challenges and then the services that you offer with regard to hemp paper, because they are so in demand, so hard to find. And there are a couple other folks, you know, moving in, but they have limited services and products that they're offering. So could you tell us about Tree Free Hemp from challenges to the great services that you provide? So when we started Tree Free Hemp, it was in 2013. And I had found a natural paper maker out of California, Greenfield Paper Company, and they were making a variety of papers, including a hemp blended paper. And and that's where we first grabbed our paper from and worked out a, a manufacturing milling deal with those guys. And at that time, the, the fiber was coming from Canada, and then things kind of dried up in Canada. The subsidies run ran out for some of these people that were actually processing fiber in Canada, which, as you know, the fiber side of things in Canada has been problematic for a long time, and they've never figured out a way, and I think they are now, to how to utilize that, that waste. But when that dried up, then we had to start sourcing material from across the pond over in out of Spain and out of Europe because nobody in the United States at this point has been able to figure out how to create a, a usable hemp pulp. Um, Sunstrand has been working on things. I think that they'll come up with something. Ed Lairberger at Pure Hemp Technology, we have worked together on creating pulp and we actually created a hemp stock paper pulp that's under Tree Free Hemp, where we made some 50-50 paper using Colorado-grown hemp with Edge Technology, his countercurrent reactor or continuous countercurrent reactor, where they make a really cool pulp, and then we blended it together with uh, some post-consumer waste in Boulder, and there's a company called Bloom in there that's a handmade paper company, and we made some really cool specialty art paper, which we still use for limited edition posters at, at the events and so forth. But the, the hemp paper market has been challenging. There's not that many mills left. It's a dirty industry. And we have to retool these mills to start being able to use props like hemp or canap or flax. And this material that can go in and replace tree-based pulp. We don't need to be chopping down trees to make our paper anymore. It's uh, We've just decimated our 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 forests and our our ecosystems out there. When you when you chop down forest to for paper and then you replant like GMO trees and, and have these tree farms that grow in eight to twelve years, nothing lives there. They're nothing other than the trees that so we, we gotta get away from this where we're using crop based pulp to, to make our paper and our packaging. And forgive me, because I definitely want to go into those services for my own selfish reasons and so that other people who are listening will be inspired to replace their toxic wood pa- bleach wood paper in their offices, in their homes with your hemp blended paper when they listen. So I mean, I really do want us to address that, but I can't help as we discuss the planet here. It's not just this growing of trees and this, this ridiculous use of trees. Could you explain to us what linion is and, and what, it, what the difference in the lin- linion content in trees versus hemp and also the need to bleach versus not and what the dioxins in our water table do? Uh, some of that stuff might be technically above my head, but hemp has a high concentration of cellulose and it's also got lignin. All, all plants have lignin and lignin is a sticky byproduct that can be used for adhesives and a variety of other materials that a company like Pure Hemp Technology has been working on for years, and they got one of the top lignin scientists in the world. Um, but you have to dignify the material to get it into the paper market. And it's a very chemically driven process, typically with wood. And that, that's one of the things where you have to use all these chemicals to strip off the lignin to just get down to the cellulose. And the Pure Hemp Technology technology actually does it in a way that is very environmentally friendly and running it through their countercurrent reactor. And it, everything is closed loop. So any of the chemicals that they do use never escape and they're continually reused. So they've got a process that's from a chemical standpoint that is way, way better for the earth. Um, so that I did not. So that's even a, a double whammy that they have a process 
that recycles and reuses and maximizes the the few amounts of chemicals that are required to break down the linen. And, and, you know, brother, the way I tend to describe it to people, I say, if you punch a tree trunk, you're going to hurt your hand. That's a thick, hard tree trunk because linen is what gives plants their rigidity and, and protection. Whereas you can punch a hemp stalk, you're not going to hurt your hand. There's only about 3% linen in hemp. So those chemicals simply aren't necessary when we really start to wrap our heads around, right? Oh my goodness. We have, do you know how many chemicals it takes to break down a tree trunk to get to the cellulose when hemp has only 3% linen and is basically 75 to 85% cellulose? You know, it's just such a game changer. And the fact that we don't have to bleach it and, and poison uh, the water tables with all of the dioxins, it's just such an incredible service that you do um, to provide this to folks. And, and what is available at Tree Free Hemp for offices and homes? Well, we do have some reams of paper. Reams of paper, it's still incredibly pricey because of the lack of the amount of hemp paper that's available in the marketplace. When we run hemp paper, and we just ran 10,000 pounds of it, you know, running 10,000 pounds of paper compared to running 200,000 pounds of paper on a monthly basis like a lot of these big paper companies do, the price becomes pretty expensive. So reams we do have, that they that they're they're fairly pricey. It's like forty bucks a ring. But we offer business cards, postcards, posters, brochures, program guides, greeting cards, letterhead, general all-purpose marketing collateral. We we're starting to do some packaging. We're working on a a new paperweight that's a, a eighteen point paperweight that would be great for tincture boxes and vape pen packaging and in a variety of packaging that's out so getting getting into some packaging getting into some packaging yeah, and, and some people are doing packaging with the hemp paper that's that, that's out there but to me the 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 heaviest weight paper that we've got it's like a 15 point it's just it's, it's it doesn't quite stand up to what's out there on the market where you can find re- recycled stocks that are a little bit more rigid so there's some r d and technical processes that need to be developed and that are being worked on again, by Pure Hemp Technology, who I think I'm allowed to say is launching a new entity called Pure Hemp Pulp and Paper that I will be working with. And me and Ed, I just had a conversation on it last night. So there's exciting things that that those guys are doing over there that we're going to be partnering with. So exciting things for the future of hemp paper coming this year. Oh, my God. I mean, what a note to end on, brother. That just made my heart sing. Pure hemp pulp and paper. You know that Ed Lerberger is one of my favorite humans. I, I just, you, you gentlemen working together is just, it's such a light. Um, and, and thank you 10 million times over for everything you do. We've only scratched the surface in this interview. We could go on and on um, for, for each of your products. And we haven't even touched upon just the tremendous activist that you are. Brother, you've got fire. You don't want to be on the opposite side of Morris when he's fired up if you've done the movement wrong. Um, you know, I, you're just an amazing soul. We're so blessed to have you. Anything that I can ever do for you, you know, you can you can always call, brother. Just so many folks that appreciate you um, and lift you up so much. Thank you for being on the show today, and and thank you for everything you do in our Morris. Well, thank you, Joy, and feeling is mutual. You are a a rock star and a, a queen for the hemp industry. You put out positive light and great information and you're collaborative. And that that's what this industry needs, purpose, intention. And, and there's a great group of us that have stood up to, to make a difference in this world. And, and it's great to be a part of it. God, each one, teach one. We'll just keep going. Morris, thank you again, brother. Have a great rest of the week. 